Hello everyone, I'm Summer Bob. During this mini series, you've gotten a chance to get clear about how to look at your body's daily signs as a way to assess your current state of health. What you measure, you can improve. So I really wanna appreciate you for joining me on this journey. I have been sharing uh, symptoms and messages of what shows that you have a gut imbalance or not. And gut health, it's my specialty. I love this topic. It's also the foundation of your health. And now that you have taken the time to figure out where you stand and what some of your gut issues are, it's time to make a game plan from here to get better. You're equipped with an amazing feedback system to tell you how your body is functioning on the inside. In the past four videos, I taught you how to look at your face, your eyes, your skin, your poop, your energy levels, and even your emotional stress to get a sense of what's going on in your blood and guts. And today you're gonna to learn how to make a blueprint for what to do with all this information. We're gonna make a gut rebuilding blueprint. You've spent the past few days assessing your current state of health using some of the most effective and important signs that you can monitor for yourself on a regular basis to witness shifts in your internal bioterrain. I wanna show you how to make strides in your bioterrain so that it is a healthy environment that probiotics can grow easily there with very little effort on your part. Now, Louis, Louis Pasteur said it best. He said, I was wrong. It isn't the microbe, it's the terrain. And he said this on his deathbed. This is the guy who made up pasteurization. This is the guy who came up with the germ theory. So pretty, pretty, pretty strong statement there. After all of that work, he kind of went back on what he believed. You know, you can take probiotics, but if your gut is a barren wasteland, you can throw apple seeds on that sand all day long, hoping they're going to grow into fruitful trees. And they're not going to until you nourish that soil and rebuild the right environment for them to thrive. In 2014, Americans spent $3.8 trillion on medical care. That's $11,915 and 16 cents per person in the US. So basically, if you're a US citizen, you can allot $12,000 a year on medical care for yourself. And that's not counting healthy people. It's not counting myself, my clients, uh, my colleagues, their clients who are spending significantly less on this. So there are some people out there who are spending way more. I don't want that to be you. I don't want you to spend more money on chronic, preventable, and unnecessary diseases. My dad spent years of his life going to the doctor and taking medications that were treating symptoms. When he got to the root of the issue by rebuilding his gut, his symptoms lessened and he was able to lower his medications. You know, I was scared for decades about my father getting sicker and sicker from diabetes. It's part of why I even started doing this work. I wanted to save my dad. I couldn't live with the idea of him getting his feet amputated or him losing his eyesight to a disease that wouldn't even exist if people knew how to eat in a way that actually promotes the growth of probiotics in the gut. And the same goes for asthma, allergies, obesity, autoimmune disease, digestive issues, and depression. I don't want you or anyone else that you know to be losing precious years off their life. Americans also spend $28 billion a year on over-the-counter medications and supplements. What are you budgeting for with your supplement fund? Are you relieving symptoms or healing the root cause? How do you know if your supplements are getting to the root or just masking symptoms? So how did we get in this mess in the first place? The three main causes of gut imbalance are antibiotics, nutrient lacking foods, and stress. And this isn't any one person's fault. There's an overall lack of education about how to properly take care of your dietary needs. And there's a lot of conflicting information out there. That's why we've spent the last few videos going over the basics of paying attention to your body and using this information as feedback to track and follow. I wake up every day, I look at myself honestly in the mirror, I make sure I'm digesting my food, I continually refine my schedule to make time for self-care, exercise, dinner with my sweetie, um, you know, making healthy food for work, for play, friends, family, all of this. 
I maintain a clean and organized home. I go through my clothes, my attic, my garage, and I purge on a regular basis. My word for the year for 2015 was organize. And I've applied that to my computer, my calendar, my business, and my kitchen. I continually practice communication and mindset to get better and better at communicating who I am and what I'm up to with my clients, my friends, and my personal community and my family. You know, this eases stress in my heart and it helps me form strong relationships so that I have people to help me through rough times as well as fun, good celebratory times. I'm grateful for the amazing support I have in my life. My assistant, my boyfriend, my family, my friends. I live in a stunningly gorgeous house that my boyfriend built. I ride the nicest bikes in the world. I have a bike crush on all my bikes. I get outside almost every single day and I am very physically active. I run my business. I love the work I do. It's a project I'm always refining because I am dedicated to creating and delivering programs and products that make a difference in people's lives. And I'm trying to reach, reach as many people as possible with this information that has changed and saved my life as I can. Why? Because I don't take it for granted. I used to be so sick. It's hard when I look at myself now in the mirror, I'm just like, Whoa, how were you that sick person so long ago? I was so anxious. I would wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. I was uncomfortable in my own skin. I was so tired that I couldn't get any exercise without getting really drained. I was undernourished because I couldn't absorb my food. I was allergic to everything from chemicals, food, pollen, animals, perfume, everything. I was just getting migraines from smelling scents. It was horrible. I thought I was turning into the boy in the bubble. Like I thought I needed to get a bubble and hide in it so that I could stop being so reactive. My eyes were always watering, my nose was running, my skin was breaking out in rashes all the time. I used to not be able to afford health care. I was so broke that I would cry at night knowing that I couldn't afford to work with that one practitioner or do that one program or that one cleanse or take that, you know, get that one product that would make me be able to heal myself so I could stop suffering. And I didn't realize at the time that I was suffering from all these gut-based issues, that it would take my figuring out how to get my entire life right in order to heal my body. I couldn't heal when I was in a relationship that was making me feel crazy. I couldn't heal when I believed my family had given up on me. I couldn't heal when I was not managing my money right. And I couldn't heal when I was unhappy. I couldn't heal when I was stressed to the max. And I couldn't heal if I wasn't being my true, authentic self. And I couldn't heal if I was going to continue to make poor decisions. I'm going to teach you today my blueprint for how I got here. Gut rebuilding is what I did to heal my body. But the mental work that I did before all of that is what set the stage for me to create realistic goals and make a plan of action to achieve them. I'm going to reveal to you the groundwork that you need to lay so that when you are ready to rebuild your gut, you are ready for what I have to teach you in that program. So let's begin. Here's the blueprint. Number one, assess your current state of health. You've done most of that work in the five day challenge. Number two, determine where you want to go. Number three, understand your requirements. Four, decide. And five, commit. This is the formula that I have used the entire time while doing all the steps of gut rebuilding repeatedly while healing my body. So number one, when you assessed your current state of health, what did you find? What would you like to see improve? Are you struggling with gut-based health issues? I want you to write out a list of all the nagging health concerns that you're struggling with. Think of all the medications, herbs, and supplements you take. For each one, why are you taking it? Write down the health concern as to why you're taking this and add it to the list. And you can press pause now if you wanna go ahead and make this list, because it's an important part of the process. When you wake up in the morning, do you have pain? Do you have old injuries? Is your neck stiff? Um, do you get cold sores? Are there activities that you don't or can't participate in because of your body? Are you emotional, sensitive, allergic? Write it all down. Do you have post-nasal drip, pesky pounds that you'd like to drop, or bumps on your skin that you'd like to see go away? This is the first step in creating the blueprint, and you can pause now and finish writing this and come back, and we're going to go on to number two. Number two, 
where you want to go. I was so relieved when I got my blood work, gut analysis, and food allergy test back this year. I have come a long way. I used to be allergic to almost everything I put into my mouth. My test came back with absolutely no food intolerances or allergies. I'm like, I'm still sort of shocked by this. And my blood work was fantastic. My gut is in much better shape than before, than it's ever been. I've helped my people in gut rebuilding wean off medications, lower their blood sugar so dramatically that their doctors told them that they were no longer considered diabetic. I've helped people clear up rosacea, acne, eczema, psoriasis, reduce or eliminate their allergies, lose weight effortlessly, because this really isn't a weight loss program, but because the gut bacteria are so integral in how much weight you're carrying around, people find it's really easy to get to their ideal weight easier and achieve that when they're nourishing the bioterrain. Um, I've helped people who are exhausted and fatigued get their energy back. I've helped people get their libido back. Um, I've helped tons of people get rid of constipation and diarrhea, acid reflux, heartburn, indigestion. I've helped people wean off anxiety, sleep, and antidepressant medications. And I've helped people kill candida, get rid of dandruff, post-nasal drip, and panic attacks, and many other symptoms. These are just the ones that I can think of that I've done a lot of times with a lot of people. And all of this happened by teaching them how to take better care of their bodies and their lives and become a sustainable farmer for probiotics in their gut because that's where you absorb your nutrition. This is also how you get your gut relaxed enough to let the body take over and heal. And I teach the basics of this in gut rebuilding. And then we have three group video calls that I do where I get a chance to talk to you and everybody on in the gut rebuilding program. And there really are two different kinds of questions, logistical and strategic. So a logistical question is like, how much of this food should I eat each day? Or where is a good recipe for blah, blah, blah. Or what is your favorite herb for healing the gut? These are all great questions. Um, I think every question is a great question. I love questions. Um, but most of these can get answered by the incredible community in the Facebook Gut Rebuilding private group. Strategic questions are questions where you're asking about an obstacle that's keeping you from taking action. So an example of this is summer. I know the action step. I get what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not doing it and I don't know why. That's the perfect question for the monthly group video calls. Or my husband doesn't want to eat any of the healthy food I'm making, so now I feel all alone because we're eating separately. Ouch, <laughs> that is not good. Uh, I can really coach you and together we can create a strategy to help you get through these obstacles so that in the end, everyone wins. So that's the special thing about these calls is, you know, getting a chance to hear how I help other people strategize with, you know, I strategize with other people. It helps give you ideas you've never had. You're going to hear questions and problems that you've never really contemplated or thought about dealing with or looking at. And, you know, sometimes those can be the big game changers. You're going to get the opportunity to get all spec aspects of your life working in harmony. And that's what it takes to have a thriving body and an unstoppable life. So take a moment to answer the following questions for number two here. Number two, where you want to go? So you can pause again for a couple minutes um, after I ask the questions, but come right back because I've got some more cool things to tell you about. So here's what I want to know. What are the goals for your body in an ideal world? Wipe away hopelessness, powerlessness, and all the places where you've given up. Don't worry about being vain. Don't try to be noble in your goals. Like me, if you asked me this, I might say, I want to be strong so I can ride my mountain bike really well. But if you give me permission to be vain, I'll say, I'd really like a six pack, please. And um, part of me doesn't believe that it's possible because I've never had a six pack. I love food, but still I do secretly desire this. There you have it. I'm being honest. <laughs> These are the kinds of goals and desires I want you to dig deep for and write down. So no one has to know what you're writing down. You can burn it when you're done if you like. Um, but I want you to also look at your list of nagging health concerns and ask yourself what the opposite of that health challenge is. That'll give you a good place to start. 
You can pause it now if you need to. Once you have your list of all the things you want, so, you know, if you get on a roll here, talk about your whole life. Talk about everything you want for your whole life. But you can talk about your body and health primarily. Once you have this list, I want you to get really clear about it. I want you to tar start to envision it. I want you to close your eyes and picture it. Imagine reaching down and like rubbing your hands over your six pack abs. Feel what it feels like to be in that energetic, healthy body that you dream of. Really close your eyes, breathe and feel into this experience. From this place, I really want you to drop into this future version of yourself who has achieved your health goals. Feel it, get in that body. It might not even be comfortable. You might feel emotions. I sometimes I get like a little bit teary eyed trying to get into like that spot of like the place I haven't gotten to yet. Okay, here's the question. When you're in that, once you get there, what is possible now? What are you gonna do with your life when your days and your time is freed up from having to, to focus on all the sick moments, the low energy, being overweight. What are you gonna now do? What are you gonna pursue? Really imagine letting go of the struggle, the health challenges, the pain, the work, the fatigue, and write down for me what is possible now that wasn't before. Another way of asking this is, what will having this do for you? That's the big why, that's the meat, that's what's under it all. If you really follow the exercise I just walked you through, you're gonna know where you are going now. We've just built your internal compass. In order to have these desires and reach these goals, you'll have to transform yourself. You'll have to become a different person. You'll have to change your habits, your mindset, your belief, and even the way you think. But you only have to change if you want to. You're in control of this process the entire time. All right, let's look at number three of the blueprint, understanding your requirements. After education, coaching, and advising people on their health for 14 years, I've witnessed many people go through health and wellness programs. In every program out there, people succeed and some people fail. And I wanted to know, why don't some people succeed? I'm dedicated to continually tweaking and refining my programs to increase engagement, takeaways, insight, actionable steps, and ultimately success, because that's the whole point. There are some basic requirements to make your success inevitable, and I've really refined this over the years. I understand that all humans have the same basic needs, love, safety, and belonging. If you start a new program and you change all the habits that keep you close to your friends, say you stop smoking and all your friends are smokers, or you stop eating broccoli and all your friends have broccoli night every night, then you've lost your common bond. You no longer belong if you, if you um, take that thing away. So for many of you who are struggling with your health, you already feel like you don't belong because you're allergic to food, you have to pack your own food, or you make special arrangements. Maybe you're tired of being the one at the restaurant that seems so picky, or you just have t terrible digestive issues after you eat, and you kind of want to be alone. Maybe you're sick of feeling like you're high maintenance. If you struggle with food, you're about to discover an amazing community where instead of people suggesting that it's in your head or that you're going to get over it, um, that you know, instead you're validated in your struggle, given support to maintain a powerful healing diet and given hope that you can do something about it. I really believe you can get over it and do something about it, but a lot of people are telling you, oh, just get over it. You're like, uh, if I knew how I would, I'd be done. I promise you, this is not fun. <laughs> so, you know, it's great when you can do something about it. You can ask for ideas and support from others in this amazing community. Um, and you can even share things that you've already learned in your journey. So you're gonna become of service as well. You become the teacher as you are the student. You get to develop relationships with people from all over the world that get it. They understand what you're going through and they wanna support you. Love, safety, and belonging. That's what makes change ultimately possible. Now, we've talked about the community aspect and the other requirements for healing involve education and information and finding a mentor who can track your process. This is key. So you need a program or a system that's gonna teach you not only about food and herbs, but also teaches you how to be in a state of rest and restore. 
This is essential. Since stress is one of the biggest factors in disease, you have to basically unlearn stress. This means handling your life, learning what lab work you may need, prioritizing and organizing your home, and creating a self-care master plan so that you can rule your life instead of having your life rule you. We don't want your life just dictating how stressed out you are. We want you to be in control of that. So the program must pay attention to delivery and engagement and have a track record of helping people. Let's talk about mentorship. Finding a mentor is an important part of your healing journey. You don't want to go at it alone. Uh, I tried that. It's very confusing. It's overwhelming. And it, you're, it's too hard to see yourself, yourself objectively. There's too many blind spots. You want to work with a mentor you can trust. This is really important. Someone who has been there and experienced um, helping work with people who have similar issues as what you struggle with. I do not recommend working with someone who has no experience healing someone with your health concerns. Like if, if, if they've never worked with that, find someone who has. These are questions I always ask when I'm seeking mentorship in any area of my life. And I have mentors who help me play viola, teach me business strategies, how to tweak my exercise so I can get more fit. And I even have a therapist to help me adapt to my swiftly changing life. I seek out people who have achieved what I want and I learn from them. So if in your gut it feels like a good fit to work together, I'd be honored to track your progress in my gut rebuilding program. Once you register, I'd love to have you fill out a health evaluation form so that you can learn where you are right now and what your goals are. I want to know what that is. So then during the three, month, um, the three monthly calls that we have, I can pull up your health eval and I can give you direct coaching because you've given me all the details in advance. And if you, if you feel you need more one-on-one -on -one time with me, I do offer one-on-one -on -one time for my current clients. All right, let's move on to number four. So number four is to decide. This is a juicy one. Make a decision about your health. For me, it was standing on the corner on the Evergreen State Parkway. Um, it was Evergreen Parkway at the Evergreen State College. And I'm standing there and the pollen is yellow gusting through the air and it's freaking me out. And it's scary because it's making my eyes totally run uh, or water and my nose run and I'm getting all puffy and itchy all, all, all over the place. And I had this epiphany in the moment. I realized, you know what? I was born here. This is my world. I should not be allergic to this. And it was in that moment when I realized that I needed to cure myself of my allergies. Like this was a done deal. I'm curing myself of my allergies. I will do whatever it takes. Done. I made this decision. Your decision is an affirmation. An affirmation that I give some people is I will do whatever it takes to fully heal my body. You can make up any kind of decision here based on you know your goals of where you're going, but it needs to be realistic. It's okay if you don't fully believe it yet, but it has to be on the edge for you. You have to kind of believe it, kind of not is okay. Um, over time, you will fully believe it. And every time you say it, you're making that decision again anew. If you mess up, it's fine. You just redecide and you just keep doing it. You need to make a clear sentence that you can repeat over and over that is large enough to encompass the little decisions that you need to make each day to move you toward that big decision. So one of my favorite quotes is this, the decisions of our past are the architects of our present, which means that the decisions of our present are actually the architects of our future. So if you want to attain the goals that you set for yourself in, in uh, the blueprint step number two, then you need your decisions today to be in alignment and integrity with those goals. Do you know how to get in integrity with your decisions and goals? This is something we do in the three month call, the three monthly calls. This is powerful stuff that most people just aren't paying attention to, but it's the structure behind having an amazing life. You have to make sure that if you're saying, I want to do whatever it takes to heal my body, that you're not smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee every morning like a fiend. That doesn't mean you're doing whatever it takes to heal your body. You need to figure out how to actually get yourself in integrity with all of your actions. And that's when you see momentum and that's when the healing starts to work. Number five, commit. Do you have commitment issues? <laughs> if so, stick around for this one. Part of making a decision is changing your underlying beliefs. When you make a strong decision like the ones that I've mentioned so far, you're, you're committing. By participating in a program that is structured around your success, you're committing. By making a declaration to a community of people who will support you, love you, and hold you accountable, you're committing. This blueprint really only works, though, if you make the most important commitment. Do you know what that is? You have to commit 
to be 100% responsible for your own health. That is the ultimate premise. Your health is in your hands and your hands only. Every bite of food is your destiny. So I know I've covered a lot here. You have a few options moving forward. One option is to commit to your health. Let go of everything, follow along in the gut rebuilding program where I've done all the work for you. You just need to show up each week, do the action step and join us for the video call. All right, everyone, I hope to see you in the community. This is Summer Bach and I'm signing out. Thank you.